Let's drive it. I got a couple seats laying around. Wow. So it's like stuck in gear, isn't it? Wow. Okay. Well, let's get it back in there. Let's see. Whoa. Easy, easy ride about there. Just enough I can shut the door and I still got room to get around. That's my pride and joy right there. Oh, you should see the little thing that goes on the side of that. I sold it? The sidecar? Oh, what? Really? So that's a 1949 survey car and there's the back. So that sits on the back oh, no with shit. the fender. So it's got the box and the fenders go on it and it runs. So it's two kicks just to get oil and one kick with the key on. She right. fires right out. All right, guys. Thanks for coming back to Hobson's Choice Harleys. What we got here is a 1980 FX. All kinds of stuff going on. A buddy of mine brought me this bike. He had some work done and the whole thing is seized up on the transmission. So I don't know if it's going to be a transmission rebuild. I'm thinking it's a, just a push rod, the transmission push rod or the linkage. This is a rotary top transmission. He brought this by and said, fix it. So that's the plan. Next couple videos, you'll probably see me tearing the primary off on this diagnosing it and then hopefully getting him back up and on the road soon stay tuned don't forget to hit that like button subscribe talk to you soon Who's soon to be? let me grab a half inch rip. okay so we're gonna try and get this muffler strap and i'm gonna have to get my book out and see i don't know if you guys can tell but i've got this flat strap here that's strapped down to the back of the transmission I've got this flat strap here that going nowhere so i'm assuming that there's some kind of bridge or brace or something back in here that i'm missing on this so if anybody's watching this and knows what should be over there let me know i do have a manual on this i just haven't got familiar with it yet and my parts from illinois got here today from fastenal i got a whole pallet full of 45 parts when i say 45 that's not the year that's the engine this is a 45 cubic inch motor and i got a whole bunch of got a spare motor and just a bunch of extra parts you can never have too many harley davidson parts you could even ask my wife she even likes all the harley davidson parts she is definitely a winner to put up with my insanity that is motorcycles. Yeah, so this has been a part rather recently. If you look at those, those nuts are chromed, fine threaded chrome. They might even be metric thread. I guarantee you this machine didn't have anything chrome on it in 1949 when it rolled off the factory. So I'm gonna leave that bottom one because I just need it loose. I'm trying to get this shaft out. Then I'm gonna come over here and try and get this one off. See what happens here. Okay, the backside spinning. Let me grab a 5 8 wrench so somebody mentioned and i'm gonna go with it once i get this subframe out and i can ride this thing around the way it sits that it's a mad max machine and it kind of looks like that i have to get me some spiked hair and a mohawk or something so i can be mad max on my survey car what do you think we're close all right so there's that there's that there's that we got one more over there come around that side Oh, okay, let's try that one. Gotta be a contortionist to get to some of this stuff. So that's spinning. Again, that bracket to me looks like it should be tied to something. And what, we don't know. I think if I just get it loose enough that it can slide on that shaft. And we're going to put this back on and see what happens. What I'm doing is I'm putting that outside nut back on there. Because I don't want to booger those threads. And then I'm going to try first with the rubber mallet and see if that shaft moves at all. It appears to think it might move. So if you look there, we've got some movement. So if all else fails, you come around and you put this nut on and we're going to try and go back the other direction. So we're finally catching up to the rest of the world on our weather. It's been rainy and snowing and freezing. Maybe that's why my fingers don't want to work. There we go. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, I think maybe she wants to go out from this side. Looky there. Might be living right, guys. It's coming apart. I'm not sure if you knew that, but this is a, some people call that a half inch by 12 inch ratchet extension. I call it a shaft driver. Today, anyway. All right. Woohoo! Parts is parts. Let's see if we can get a shot inside there. So if you can see this bushing and this bushing are so oblong that it was kind of felt like an earthquake driving this machine. It shook so bad, especially this one. So I'm gonna have to get those pressed out. I'll have to put them on a bearing press, press those out, get them mic'd up. 
get some new ones cut or see I might be able to go through 45 restorations they might have a set in stock again I'll have to mic it I don't know what those are offhand and for those of you that don't know when a when somebody says mic they're talking about a micrometer it's just basically a set of claws that has a meter on it in fact here I don't talk so good I can explain better so a micrometer is just a way of measuring outside distance we're talking to the hundred thousandth of an inch a caliper you would put on the inside is the inside distance that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about doing miking, I got to get a mic on the outside diameter of that bushing and a caliper on the inside diameter of that bushing, as well as measuring the shaft where that runs and make sure that that takes all the slop out of that. Usually those bushings are brass. Brass is soft. You want soft because there's not a lot of movement there, but there is some movement there. All new bushings. So those are brass bushings. Down here on the shock absorbers, those are rubber bushings. There's a lot of stuff this old machine needs. Keep watching as we keep tearing it down. Coil shocks are coming off. Well, he says that a little bit at a time. So these are stuck down in there. Oh, I can't get into it with that one. Okay, fine. Let's lay on that cold concrete. It feels good. Just no easy way to do some of this stuff. Got this bolt and one more, and I should be able to pull that subframe completely off of here. All right. One more, guys. One more. Yeehaw! Hey, look. There's a wasp nest. I'm hoping it's cold enough I don't get wasp bit. I don't know how I've got different size, but I do. That's half inch. Okay. If we did it right... One disassembled subframe. Yeah, that's cool. It might get run like this for a while just because it's cool and I got a lot of work to do on the metal, the tins to get them back on. Huh, loving it, loving it. So I do got to get these shocks off. And I might measure those and see. I probably, instead of messing with bushings and all of that, I can take these perch mounts off, measure those. Yeah, see, those are blown. You shouldn't be able to do that. I'll just go down to Napa and buy a set of shocks. I don't have to have a bazillion dollar factory original Harley shock. Just give me a little... Monroe gas shock on there and I'll be fine. Wonder I might measure it. I've got two whole boxes of shovel head shocks. I'm wondering if a guy couldn't couldn't just put a set of shovel head shocks on here. All right, so we're gonna stick those back in there so we don't lose them. And I still haven't got me a designated bucket for all my survey car bolts. So I'm gonna have to get me a coffee can out here. As you can see, if you pan around on the floor, I got parts everywhere. Okay, shock one. Yeah, I got a nice set of totally enclosed chrome FL8 shocks. I put those on there for my buddy Billy Aziz. He'll love it. A lot of you guys might know Billy. He's out of Wales. He's my brother from another mother. And he likes to harass me mercilessly, which is all right. That goes both ways. Yeah, so you can see this these rubber bushings they're just beat and then all the surfaces here i gotta go through there and steel wool all that clean all that up steel wool clean all this up re-oil everything lube the chain paint everything pull the wheels off see what the brake shoes are like in the videos that we were doing last week about putting all the uh, parts on the shelves i found two or three boxes of new old stock 45 brake shoe linings and some brake shoes so i don't know what the condition of the brakes are, but I'm going to check them. Just amazing how much stuff I've been able to find in that box of parts. So this here is just so I don't forget because I'd probably be riding this thing around. This holds the back of the muffler and I don't want that muffler bouncing around. So I'm just going to snug this on for temporary sake. Let's see, where's my nine?
There we go. Just so that doesn't bounce out. Okay, guys, what do you think? There's the Mad Max 49 ready for phase three. So I don't know. I think we're about done for the day, guys. It's a winter wonderland. It's cold. It's wet. Been playing with my knuckles busted because of the cold wrenches. We got a lot done today. Got some video footage. Got a new bike in the shop to tear down. Got some work done on the survey car. Everything's going good here at Hobson's Choice Harleys. Keep watching. We appreciate you watching, subscribing, liking, all of the above. Thanks, guys. All right, you guys made it to the end. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please kickstart that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, comment what you guys think. Let me know if you have any suggestions for video ideas or topics you guys want covered, and I'll do my best to include those in my next projects. You guys can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out the Beacons link in the description below. See you next time.